Welcome again to the CMC Markets Weekly Charting Analysis Webinar with myself, Jasper Lawler. We have the risk warning on the screen. Let's quickly get through that, and then we will move on with the webinar itself. Okay. Brilliant. So, I'm going to start the webinar off with just a quick summary of some of the economic events that are happening this week. <clears throat> what I did want to also kind of touch on is just, um, you know, we call this the weekly charting analysis webinar. Um, so, obviously, a heavy emphasis on, on the charts. And uh, I'm charted in technical analysis, and so I come at the economic calendar with a bit of a kind of technical analysis bent. Now, there are different ways of, of trading the news. My particular interpretation on how to best use the news is just that, um, you know, I'm not, I, I studied economics, but uh, I'm not an economist by profession. I suspect most of you listening to the webinar are not economists by, by profession. And to be quite honest, even if you were, economists mostly get these, uh, these forecasts for these economic numbers wrong. So it's very difficult to know what the direction of the number is going to be and be able to use that forecast of the economic number to correctly predict the, the resulting currency move. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not unusual at all for a number to be positive and the currency to react badly. Um, <clears throat> now, I know that sounds a bit complicated and you sort of might think, well, why even look at the economic numbers? <clears throat> Um, my, my take on it is that, uh, you know, we're looking at the charts uh, and we're looking at some of the, the key levels and the patterns within the chart, the key trends as we see them. And it's these economic news events that are, are triggering whether a certain level holds or whether a certain level breaks. So, so they are important. We need to be aware of when they're happening to get a better idea of when some of these price breaks and price holds may take place. And so, you know, we can look at the forecasts and, uh, you know, we can see what the result of these news, news releases are and, um, you know, and help us determine whether our initial trade idea is, is likely to be right or wrong based on what, on what happens afterwards. Our trade ideas, you know, as we look at them in these webinars are still typically, um, you know, based on, the, based on a chart. But, uh, you know, but you're looking at these economic news and you're, you're aware of when they are um, just to help make that actual breakout happen, that hold happen, as, as I said. So with that in mind, um, not a busting lot happening today, a bit of a focus on Fed speakers. So we had Janet Yellen speaking last week and we had a couple of doves uh, speaking, a couple of doves speaking today. Um, Evans being the most notable one, Williams being another uh, in terms of Fed speakers. Tomorrow, I would say that probably the primary determining, dr determining driver of the US dollar would be the consumer confidence. Um, it's proven a bit of a difficult indicator in terms of predicting retail sales. Arguably quite useless, but nonetheless, the market does react from it. The U.S. is a uh, consumption-based economy, so important to look at that. Um, we're expecting a, um, a, a fairly substantial drop. Uh, the last print was 101.5. Now we're looking at 96.2. Um, so that would be dollar negative, um, the number in itself. We're going to look at the charts in a bit to, de to decide how negative the, the reaction is likely to be given the current situation in these different pairs. Not a lot going on um, in Europe, probably the most important being the, um, the German preliminary, uh, preliminary, excuse me, I can sit down, preliminary um, consumer, consumer price index. And uh, on Wednesday, uh, so we've got Carney speaking as well on Tuesday, so that'd be important for the pound perhaps for the FTSE, uh, for, the, for the UK 100. And then um, we have German retail sales on Wednesday. Um, expecting a bit of a slide there. 
Um, German unemployment, pretty consistently good German unemployment, the, the data not probably going to be a massive driver of the euro. Um, and then on, on Wednesday, uh, later on, we have um, the final GDP number for the UK, uh, expected to remain the same at 0.7% in Q2. Um, and then uh, probably one of the more important prints on the day will be the, the Eurozone CPI data, which is expected to drop down to, uh, to zero year over year, core um, to remain flat at 0.9%. Um, and, you know, that's, that's to be expected. The oil, the oil price has plummeted in the last couple of months. Uh, we've got Yellen speaking again on Wednesday. We've got the ADP data. Um, ADP is obviously the first precursor to the non-farm payrolls. Uh, and then keep in mind, of course, that we've got our special non-farm payrolls webinar hosted by Michael Houston. So if you are trading in and around the event, may as well log into the webinar, get a bit of an extra insight there from, from Michael and also from Colin, I believe. Um, then uh, certainly want to watch out for in the, the early hours of Thursday, uh, of Thursday is the Chinese manufacturing PMI. Um, you know, China has been a primary concern recently, and um, you know they, these these PMI prints have been increasingly negative. Um, this one is uh, the official data is expected to remain flat. The um, the one how, uh, done by uh, Kaixin is expected to rise slightly to 47.2 from 47.0, but still in contraction territory. And um, on Thursday we've got uh, UK PMI. Uh, we've got U uh, U.S. Uh, manufacturing, um, along with most Eurozone countries. Later on, the ISM manufacturing PMI from the U.S. That one's expected to slip back. You know, the kind of general story here is that, um, you know, I was, was initially talking about the oil prices being a, a boon to consumers. You're seeing a bit of a lagged effect there. And um, the more the more primary effect is that it's hitting the oil sector um, part, and that, you know that part of the manufacturing base in the US. So that's why we're seeing uh, manufacturing surveys starting to, to come off a bit and some of the other manufacturing data from the US. That's a bit dollar negative. Um, but it's all largely going to be a build up to the, the NFP result. Obviously, the Fed remained on hold in September. So we're looking at this NFP data to get a better gauge on whether they're likely to lift off in any of the forthcoming months. Uh, as you probably know, October and November, not too likely. Um, it's the December meeting that uh, where they have a press conference that would be the, the likely timing date, given that Janet Yellen recently said um, that most FOMC members are still looking at a 2015 rate hike. So um, end of the year, they've said. So what, well, December is the end of the year. So, uh, you know, that, um, yeah, that could happen, but it depends on the, on data. I would honestly say that um, probably doesn't largely depend on this NFP data, but every little bit counts, and, um, you know, we'll likely see some, some dollar moves flying around. Expected, uh, you know, last month was quite a big drop beneath 200,000, down to 173 for non-farm payrolls. Um, the consensus forecast among economists now is 202,000. So um, back above 200,000, you know, I think that would, you know, if it came in along consensus, that would probably be dollar positive. Obviously, obviously anything above consensus, uh, you would assume that would be positive for the dollar. Okay, got that all out of the way. Uh, let's have a look at some of the charts here. So I think we're going to start just with uh, in the UK. I've um, got um, on the screen here some of the, uh, you can see it's a sea of red today. One of the most noticeable, ex insane examples is, is Glencore. That was down as much as 27% just today. Um, so my condolences to any of you who hold any Glencore stock. I hope you, you know, if you follow along these charts and webinars, you would have known to cut your losses a long time ago in Glencore. 
but nonetheless, the whole mining sector getting pretty smashed. You can see Anglo-American down uh, 7%, all of these mining names in trouble. Um, Shell came up dry in a, in a, in a drilling project, so um, BP and Shell down pretty heavily. So the FTSE, as a result, is down. Uh, the UK 100 down was uh, in the cash market down over 1%. You know, as we trade it in our different opening times, um, that's around, uh, you know, just under 1%. So, you know, these global indices are all looking fairly similar. Um, what you'll see is that the, I would say the order of weakness is that the, the Germany 30 looks the weakest, the UK 100 looks the sort of in the middle, and uh, the, the US 30 probably the strongest. And I'm just basing that on the recent trading range. Now I've just well, I've just drawn this level in up here, uh, based on this you know this little retracement peak, which is seen better on the four hour chart as a possible area of resistance because I'm still sort of seeing this break of this low, which as I mentioned hasn't actually broken in the US 30. Um, this break here is generally negative for the UK 100. And I would be expecting the market to roll over before this line uh, and before this peak. Obviously, back in and above this peak, you know, this has proved to be a false break, and then we've got another break to deal with on the upside. So that's possible. Um, you know, this could turn into something akin to a double bottom. It actually would be a pretty much a, a double bottom in the Germany 30. We'll see in a second. But um, just based on the, the longer term trend. Um, you know, it's not it's not the greatest trading conditions at the moment. It's pretty choppy, uh, but I you know I'm looking at this. I'm defaulting to some assuming that this big drop is now consolidating before another big drop. That's that's the way I'm looking at it. A break of these highs tells me I'm wrong, and I'll be looking the other way. Now. Just Skipping across to the Germany 30, as I mentioned, looks very similar, um, but you know we actually dropped right down to that uh, low. That August 24th low is the one that we're dealing with in the most most of the, um, the equity markets. All these moves have been pretty correlated, as we've mentioned before, because of the sort of global concerns about what's happening in China, etc. <coughs> um, so. <coughs> Bounced pretty nicely off this low back here a couple of times. Hasn't come right down to this um, this December low. It certainly could push down there again and get a little rebound off that, but I suspect now, after these couple of bounces, if we were to push back below the sort of 9,300 area, um, that would be looking pretty negative for the Germany 30. It was difficult to kind of forecast. Um, what you know to see patterns before they happen, but the way I'm looking at this at the moment is there's a drop, you know, a pullback, and you know, kind of the beginnings of a, a rising trend line through here, and that got broken. We're back down at the lows, so this could be a double bottom, but at the moment, I'm looking at the fact that we got oversold and we're coming back off the oversold area for people looking to, to sell back into the, the drop again, and assuming that we're going to drop back down through these lows. Wouldn't necessarily want to be going short just yet, because we have had a bit of a reaction off the low, and we are pretty pretty down far from that uh, from that peak um, that we had earlier in uh, on the 9th of September. So a bit of a weak follow through from this pattern so far. Could get another couple of jabs down here, then we'll get a better picture as, as to whether we're actually able to form a base. One thing I've mentioned here in the chart forum. Is that we've not actually got to uh, gotten to an oversold position yet, so um, I'm not. I don't necessarily construe that as a um, as a positive. Uh, I'm looking at it as the idea that maybe not enough people will be encouraged to buy in because it's not oversold yet. So that could mean there's more downside to go. Looking across to the uh, the US thirty. There's the same range, same sort of false break up near the top, um, and um, <clears throat> the resulting drop. 
and uh, but we have recovered off the base of the range. This was um, this was Thursday's Thursday's move um, in and around the the comments from from Janet Yellen. And, um, but you know, if you didn't catch those uh, after failing to lift rates at the last meeting, Yellen then came out saying that they are still looking for a rate hike this year. That was the, that was the crux of it. And so that's been kind of supportive because maybe the, scared, the Fed are not so scared about uh, about global growth. So we're holding this 16,000 level on the, on the US 30 at the moment. But, um, you know, I think you've just got to, even if you're trading short term, you've got to just keep in mind the fact that we're really between these um, uh, 16,000 as, as the sort of daily support with I would argue probably the more significant level being the 16700 level with these these peaks and this being the false break. So break down below 16,000 naturally you'd assume we're heading back down towards um, you know firstly the sort of 15570 kind of area but um, you know ideally back down to this low in the sort of 15340 type vicinity. Um, and, and again, similar to the DAX, we had a kind of rising trend line and a break, stuttering around at the previous low, but then, you know, assuming a continuation of the trend. Um, we're going to switch over to uh, the commodities now. Um, gold was faring a bit better. It was holding up early on, but it's getting a bit of a beat down now. Um, you know, largely uh, because of some dollar strength, uh, but also because, the, you know, you can see here that the mining companies and the, the, the metals space in general is getting pretty pretty beaten down with silver down almost three percent, copper down pretty heavily, and um, you know some of the others that are not so not so liquid like iron ore also down. So this is the way I'm viewing gold. Kind of pulled the chart out a little bit here. This is the daily chart. This is our down sloping trend line, which it looks like we've got a break from. And we still could have the following day. We just had a little bit of a pullback, closed above the line, as I have it. I basically, I know that we've had this line since. And I know we've got this line here, which we could kind of draw through these peaks, and I think that's playing part of it. It's all part of the same zone. I consider this the kind of bigger, bigger play trend line. And uh, to my mind, there was an inside day while people kind of, you know, paused for thought after the breakout. Today's action is quite negative for me. Today points to me towards a false breakout of the, of the rising trend line. And so we basically, put, you know, in a kind of an, in a nice uptrend, what you get is a push higher, a pullback, a push higher, pullback to the previous peak, and a push higher again, which would have corresponded quite nice. Is what happened initially. It's what happened on Friday. Um, and then you would have wanted to see a, a move back up to the 200-day moving average, uh, but that hasn't happened. We, we've fallen off quite a lot. Next obvious support is the previous low, but I'm sort of suspecting we're dropping back down to this rising trend line again, and um, yeah, feasibly lower. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're below the 200-day moving average, and um, the the weekly trend um, is basically sort of sideways. We've, we've put in a higher low, which is a positive. Um, so, you know, while above that, there's still scope for a um, for an uptrend developing and a base put into gold. But I suspect we're probably dropping back down towards the, um, um, back down towards the one, sort of one 100 mark again, I suspect. Just purely off based off today's action. Um, again, we could hold this low, that you know that'd be worth watching around this low, uh, depending on your your you know your trading style, whether you're looking for some sort of short-term oversold indicators or a daily uh, pattern confirmation on the candlestick. So you know whatever you use to trigger your entry, just have a look in and around that support. You know maybe you buy right at the support if that's your trading style, 
Um, to me, that's a significant one. If we can hold there, you know, we've still got this little short-term uptrend intact, and we could push back for another another break through that declining trend line. Um, over to silver. Now the chart's actually pretty messy in silver, but I, again, I think what's happening today is um, is quite a negative one for silver. We had seen some signs of uh, bullish divergence with higher low, high, um, higher lows being put in on the RSI um, while the silver price was chopping around in this range. Um, but you know the fact that we just really haven't managed to sustain above 15 and dropping quite substantially below it today. Um, down to sort of one week lows um, suggests to me that you know we've got a bit of a sort of failure swing here in the RSI matching the price. Looks to me like you know we could still hold the rising trend line, um, but I'm sort of you know, starting to look like maybe we're going to break it now, and that would suggest to me that we're pushing into perhaps down to 14 again and perhaps lower, um, and that's six year lows in silver. Again, always just keep in mind where we are. We're, we're below the 200-day moving average. Um, commodities are pretty weak. So, you know, just by default, your, your short trades are going to have better odds than your longs. Um, unlucky if you time it in a stronger correction, your short trades. Obviously, those are going to go wrong. But, uh, you know, you can just generally see, look at this chart, even though it's a bit sloppy, below that 200-day moving average, there, there's, there's better scope. Um, there's more red bars than green bars, to put it in a really simple way. Um, we're still pretty bearish on um, on silver. Um, just had to take a look at Brent this time around. Uh, they're both down similar amounts today, uh, both in a pretty similar position. <clears throat> what we got here was um, a decent break of a declining trend line. That could have been the uh, the trigger. For a move back up to the, the highs again, you know, like a kind of um, a pennant type break that could have been. We could have been right back up there with sort of the same kind of velocity that we saw that initial move. That hasn't happened. We've fallen into a sideways range, uh, and to me, that probably suggests more weakness than uh, than strength. Um, that we may get another push down to the lows again. And try and base out from there, perhaps, because I mean, this is a strong move. So I'll be surprised if we just immediately drop through that. I mean, again, it, you know, it's a bear market rally. So the bear market rallies are just they are strong by nature, as uh, you know, I'm just I'm short covering. But um, to me, the fact that we haven't been able to kind of push strongly out of that uh, break of the defining trend line, and just stuck in a horizontal range, suggests probably we're going to break the bottom of the range and head down to the lows again. And again, got the support of the uh, the long term downtrend below the 200 day moving average. Over to the currency market. Um, worth mentioning at this stage. Um, uh, just cause, uh, I've only just seen the note that can't see can't see a chart. Was that just at the start that you were saying that when I was jabbering about uh, economic numbers? I assume it is. I think this screen's being shared okay. I hope it is. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm assuming everyone can see the charts I'm putting up. Okay, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Um, <clears throat> switching over to currencies, as I mentioned. Let's go to the euro. To me, at the moment, the weekly chart just says more than the euro. The daily chart is a real chop fest. Um, but the weekly chart, as I see this, is a uh, is a triangle pattern, and uh, you know I'm not so inclined to connect these two peaks. First, it's only two peaks, and you could maybe connect this low. I haven't actually tried that, but um, to me, it looks like a couple of false breaks higher from the triangle pattern. There's no real statistical edge from that. False breakouts just mean there wasn't the willingness at that time. It's not to say that we're automatically going to roll over the other way. Um, it just means we go back into the range, but which way we get the next break, um, yeah, it's really anyone's guess. And so, 
you know, this is again down to your risk management and your trading technique. Um, these, this is the pattern to me that you're watching. Um, it's just a matter of uh, waiting for that break and trading the initial move out of it. That wouldn't have served you too well with these two, or waiting for a higher close for the day or the week, um, and uh, trade, trading that breakout, or just buying and selling in the top of the, the triangle. We're getting towards the end of the, the triangle pattern now. It's almost not a triangle anymore because we're just we're past two thirds of the way through. Um, so you know, there's, there's only so long this pattern's going to hold out. And I, I suspect we could probably could get a move back down to the um, you know, back down to the kind of what would become a horizontal range support in the sort of 108.20 kind of vicinity. Worth noting on the, if we got down to the daily chart, the one thing I did think was quite sort of instructive is that we have been holding that 50 level pretty well for a while. 50 level that sort of indicates a, um, you know, typically what you deal with in, a, in, a, in an uptrend. And that acted to support what we're talking about here, maybe three times, I suppose. Uh, and then we broke through it. Now it looks like we've bounced off and we're rolling away from it. So we've got a bullish candle on Friday, but um, that, that RSI would suggest that we're actually dipping down into um, into the sort of 40 vicinity, which could suggest a break of that 110, um, so one, that 111 level, um, which would take us quite nicely down to 110, which would which would um, match almost this low here um, and the rising trend line. So a little cluster of support there, which um, which could could work out, uh, but um, you know, I think kind of a little bit a little bit more downside perhaps from here. But again, it's a choppy chart. You know, the best trade will be when we finally break out and get some defined trend. And because this pattern has been going a long time, um, you know what I you know what I would uh, advocate is not not quickly taking your profit uh, because the move out of this pattern could you know, could um, could carry quite far. Now, we're getting into the end of the webinar here. What I was starting to say before, I think, was that if you had any extra um, charts you wanted me to have a look at, then um, you know, just send me a quick note now. Cable is interesting. Um, you know, so we're basically at the bottom of this trading range. Um, so we, you know, this is a possible long trade, possible um, you know, bullish opportunity where we currently sit. Uh, but we have had a break through the bottom of the range; it hasn't sustained. But that was, st uh, but Friday was still down on the day, so not a particularly strong reversal. And again, we're in that situation where we're not actually oversold yet on the daily chart. Um, so only so many buyers going to be coming in here. And I, I think arguably what, uh, you know, the stronger pattern is this, uh, is this trend line. <coughs> Had a, you know, hit four times, five times is it, um, and then broke, came back, touched, rolled over with pretty significant gusto. And, um, you know, I suspect that maybe we'll get at least dropping down to this, uh, this previous low here, and then maybe back down to the 150 round number, which, um, you know, which is uh, obviously psychologically important, but also it was a cluster of resistance back here in March. So not a great time to go short, obviously, because we're right at the bottom of the range. Um, scope for going short is there's a bit of a bounce to me, especially towards the 200-day moving average. Um, but... Uh, you know, who knows from here? Because we are, you know, it's a pretty obvious trading range, isn't it? So there are going to be people buying in. I just don't know how far it can carry us, given the downside momentum. Well, we've been down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days in a row if today closes as it is. So that's a bit rough for, for the pound. Over to dollar yen. Um... Brilliant trading if you're a range trader at the moment. Um, you, know, you know, if you're just known to buy and sell at the top of this range, how many times could you have done that? Um, eight, ten? Um, 
nice range shading looks looks very similar to the equity markets you'll notice you know there is a good correlation between the Dow and dollar yen um, and so uh, yeah it's, it's holding this range at the moment and so buy and sell the bottom and the bottom and top of the range is well you can and uh, look for the direction of the breakout but it's it's choppy and obviously everyone's paying attention to this uh, not so much the yen but equities Yen has been kind of dictating the direction of equities a little bit, um, but I suspect they'll both eventually go the same way. One way, to, if you are just trading one of these, if you're trading just the US 30 or if you're trading just dollar yen, sometimes it can be useful to see if the other one's doing the same thing. It just gives the move a bit, the, the breakout a bit more validity if both are acting the same way. Uh, we've got a little request here for uh, for Euro Pound. Um, yeah, sorry, not much more to say on this. You know, you, um, I, I suspect that um, you know, like the equities were in bearish mode, and that that this bearish drop off is going to get followed through. Um, but that's not to say you know we could still get that continuation of this move after a push higher, you know, in, in the example of dollar yen, we could get up to 123 again, which is that previous low, which um, was holding prices up before the huge drop down. So we did get a push up to there before rolling over and continuing this. So, um, you know, just, uh, yeah, just pick your stronger levels for, for where you want to to take the trade based on where you think things are heading. I, I tend to think things are still looking fairly bearish for equities and dollar yen. Okay, over to your pounds. And uh, yeah, definitely in the last few minutes of the webinar here. All got a little request for Aussie dollar two. Um, a lot of discussions of false breaks today. I mean, I guess that's the, you know, it's a part of trading. Um, but uh, here you can see this is this this range in uh, in euro pound, which has um, been brilliant. You know, if you um, yeah, it's a difficult uh, it's a difficult art form in, in trading is being multidisciplined. Um, I don't necessarily advocate it because um, you know your your mind will just get confused if you <coughs> excuse me. If you're trying to play breakouts and you're trading off the top and bottom of the ranges, sometimes you just don't know which one to go for. Um, so it's a good skill if you can trade both. If you've been going for breakouts, um, you know, now recently has been rubbish trading conditions for you. If, you. if you're range trading, great. If you can do both, well done. Um, I tend to look for the trends. I look at these ranges as opportunities for the next trend. But except that there probably is going to be a couple of losses during these during these range trading conditions. But uh, you know, if you are a trend trader, these you know, these range conditions are you paying to keep? Just make sure you're there for the breakout when it does take place. So all I can really I mean, I think that's probably worth pulling out for a long term perspective on this. Um, um, you know, we're, we're obviously hugging that 200-day moving average, so this is really, you know, do you, don't you uh, territory. You know, we're also in the top of this um, this trading range. Um, it sort of looked like it looks like the euro in general across a few different markets has put in a bit of a base. Um, the Fed didn't move. The, the Bank of England are waiting for the Fed to lift rates. They haven't lifted rates yet. Um, inflation is um, almost nothing in the UK. There's no real justification for raising rates, except this idea of looking through the drop in oil prices. But you know, eventually the central bankers they all want to keep interest rates low, and, and um, you know they've got their excuse at the moment with with oil prices causing low inflation. So I think that's getting reflected here. In the fact that the, the Bank of England probably is not going to raise rates anytime soon, so maybe the, the euro, <clears throat> maybe the pound is is losing some of its luster, and the euro's um, 
basing against the pound, possibly basing against the dollar as well. So if that being the case, this could well be a um, could be a bull flag and looking for an upside breakout. We can't be sure of that. Looks to me more like a continuation than a top. Um, okay, well, I think we've just got time here for the the Aussie dollar. I mean, this this has been uh, you know talking about ranges and trends. This has been the one to be trading for the trend. Um, you know, this is this this has been great trading. <coughs> And uh, you know you can see on my side I put in the um, I'm going to catch myself out here. What did I actually put in the 50? Yeah, the 50 SMA uh, just in order to catch uh, um, the overbought get a better idea of the overbought conditions within what is actually a, a faster trend. You know when it's when it's more choppy range conditions it's just it's kind of confusing for me to have that many moving averages on the screen. You know, moving average to me is helping you um, when there's a trend. When there's not a trend, you don't need it. So, yeah, um, I, you know, I, I think there could, of course, be a base in the Aussie being formed. Um, I think we're at a pretty long term level, aren't we? If I even put out, what is it, a weekly chart? No, it's not enough. No, we're kind of in, in around, um, oh, it's, of course, yes, the, the, the 0.70 round number. So there's certainly scope for the Aussie to base here, but we have pretty much broken this, uh, I don't know if my chart's going to, uh, well, okay, that's as far as we're going, but yeah, that's, that's a massive long-term rising trend line. We've broken below it. Still got plenty of room to go, potentially. In terms of monthly over oversold, we are in oversold territory, and we've already had one little false break out of the out of the, out of the oversold. So we could form a little bu double bottom in RSI, push back above this rising trend line, back off the 0.70 level. I think you know we're looking better for a for a substantial move back up to maybe even 0.8. Um, just look how many support factors are lining up here. But in the short term, we are down. We are still down. You know, and, um, and uh, you know, I'm looking at you know a tweezer top here at the trend line, false break at that peak. I mean, benefit of hindsight is uh, that you know, it's a, looking back at this trade, it's a lovely trade. Did I? Put, yeah, I'm not going to put up the chart for him to see if I pinpointed it before it happened. But um, <clears throat> but yeah, for me, short term still in a downtrend, and um, so you know. Selling the bounces here in, in Aussie dollar, but uh, aware of the fact that we're at this couple of potentially pretty significant um, support levels. So if we start to see uh, push back above this 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 peak again, this sort of zone that we formed here, and that 50-day moving average, first signs that um, that, we, that that support level could be starting to hold, and we could be on for a big long trade, a big breakout the other way. So that's the end of the webinar here. Yeah, we did. Uh, we've went a fair bit over time. Um, so uh, yeah, sorry to those who've already had to skip out, get back for your uh, from your lunch break. <coughs> um, but I hope that was useful. Um, good luck trading with this week, and uh, we'll, we'll see you again next week. Thank you, Jasper Lawler signing out.